From privacy to regulation to governance and self-custody, Coindesk has cultivated an exploration of vital challenges facing the crypto community. It's all based on conversations held at Consensus 2023. Joining us now is Coindesk Chief Content Officer, Michael J. Casey. Michael, welcome to the show. Good morning, Jen. Hi, Lawrence. Good to see you guys. Hey. Good seeing you. All right. We are beginning the rollout of Consensus at Consensus with chapters coming th- coming through throughout the week. Tell us what this is all about. Yeah. So this is something we're really quite excited about. Um, you know, it came to being when we started thinking about, okay, Consensus is the big tent event of the year, the, the major crypto conference of the year. But what can we do that brings some purpose to that, particularly at a moment when we've got uncertainty around things such as regulation, uh, the outlook for privacy, the concerns over uh, the environment and so forth. And we figured, well, look, we convene people Let's bring them together. Let's set up a series of of kind of polemical issues that have been bothering the industry for some time and have different stakeholders, you know, investors, regulators, uh, developers, entrepreneurs, you know, and, and sit them around a table and just say, hey, guys, try to work something out here. We're not like suggesting that we will inevitably arrive at magical solutions to these big thorny problems, but just having everybody around the room, talking it out, and then what we did was we had our reporters attend uh, each of these separate sessions. There were 11 separate uh, issues that we dealt with, and uh, they wrote up reports, and so they wrote up their own articles on this, and and the Consensus at Consensus report is therefore a compendium uh, of all of those those issues. So what's the through line in those 11 uh, in those 11 chapters? I, I assume I, I assume you've read them all because, you know, that's. Yeah, well, um, yeah, we, I was involved in the editing process. Mark Hoxie and I have to give a big uh, shout out to, of course, as the executive editor, managing it from start to finish. And he's taking a well-deserved break at the moment. Uh, but it's um, look, I think. One of the key themes is this tension uh, between the the regulatory push, particularly in the United States right now, to sort of demand more information to uh, obviously impose things like securities laws on uh, the space, and uh, the sort of desire for decentralization, the desire to protect privacy. So you're getting this constant tension between those uh, you know technological challenges uh, along with the regulatory demands, and so the conversations around that, I think, tended toward the industry becoming more open and frank and, and able the, the, the need to actually educate people about what it brings, but also sort of exploring these middle ground areas where there may be some space to give up in terms of KYC and information, but there's also sort of you know, privacy preserving technology that can help to deliver that zero knowledge proofs, for example, in, in other areas that can help to sort of make this a more kind of compromised position. The the chapter that drops today, Michael, is on CBDCs. It's become a really hot topic, especially heading up to the next elections. What can we expect from this chapter? Yeah, so this one really uh, looks at, I think, some of the concerns people have around privacy as well. So it is a, uh, it's looking at the the likelihood of how far this industry is going to go. Um, I think there's there was a fairly common view amongst the participants that governments really aren't very well placed to deliver uh, digital currencies. That that their role in this may not be as so deeply involved as some of them might be presuming. That in fact, ultimately, you'll have sort of more private sector based solutions. Um, but you know, th- th- there's a long way to, to go, of course, in that. Um, as I said, I think the privacy issues and designing CBDCs that are are able to preserve those really important demands are, are critical. The attention on China and the concerns about the concept of a surveillance state sort of predominant dominated much of the discussion around CBDCs. Do you think that that will be something that can be uh, preserved, if you will? Do you think that there will be, uh, you, you know, you talk about this sort of uh, a focus on privacy and, and, and that being a lingering question. Is it inevitable that that will go by the wayside uh, with CBDCs just because governments don't really like giving up power? Uh, look, it's a, I think it's a very interesting question. I think it's 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 worth looking at some of the projects that are out there that are trying to take a privacy-preserving approach to this. Um, in fact, our partner 
uh, that, that who helped us to develop that particular program with the Digital Dollar Project, which was founded by Chris Giancarlo, the former CFTC chairman. And, and his position, and that I think of the DPP, is that, look, um, governments can and should be involved in this process, whether it ends up as a stablecoin model or a direct CBDC model, but that you need to bake into the very beginning of this, um, you know, privacy protection, because at the end of the day, you know, and Chris makes this point, that um, anything that's issued by a private institution, uh, certainly the models, the Facebook model, for example, would have been uh, a major concern about the loss of privacy to a corporate surveillance model. And so there is... Um, there are people certainly talking about the idea of bringing in um, these sorts of solutions that would allow governments to be part of that. The Project Hamilton uh, concept that the MIT Media Lab Digital Currency Initiative is working on with the, the, the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. Um, you know, the, these ideas are out there and, um, you know, the, if, if, and certainly also in Europe, in fact, you do find a greater awareness of privacy concerns amongst some of the central banks who are exploring um, uh, you know, CBDCs over there. So, you know, there is some movement toward it, but at the same time, clearly a very strong bias, uh, certainly within the US and certainly within a lot of other sort of money transmission regulatory regimes around the world to, you know, maintain this strict KYC structure, which really, you know, ends up sort of getting in the way of, of that desire to, to, to push through privacy. All right, Michael. And lastly, there's some Web3 tech being intertwined with the report, reporting here. Coindesk Studios has partnered with Transient Labs to offer an NFT as part of Consensus at Consensus. What is that all about? Well, I mean, it's it's another attempt by us to sort of you know uh, eat our own dog food. Uh, we we <laughs> we've done this with uh, launching tickets to Consensus as well. You know, this this is this is us you know, putting some con commemorative value on these things. What's also interesting, of course, and I should uh, should have said this from the outset, uh, this does coincide with the ten year anniversary of CoinDesk, which we celebrated last month. Um, so the report in itself has this sort of historic element tied to CoinDesk. There will be an NFT that um, you know will, will be connected to that in terms of its value and its collectability. So uh, stay tuned. Michael, thank you for joining us this morning. Such a pleasure to have this conversation. <laughs> that was Thanks Coindesk that. Chief Content Officer Michael J. Casey. To read the report throughout the week, head on over to coindesk.com forward slash consensus at C23. And check out Michael Casey on Twitter Spaces tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern time.